Hey everyone, welcome to a new late night video. Uh, it's 11.43 and I figured I'd make this video to show you guys how you can make money from one image probably hundreds of times. And I'm not really exaggerating when I say that because if I sat here and I asked you, for example, if you take an image like this, right, and you post it on Redbubble, through the course of its life, in terms of how much money it can make, can an image like this sell 10 times? 20 times, most of you would look at me and say, absolutely, it absolutely could. There's no reason why it can't. And uh, if we look at, you know, Redbubble, I mean, you have products where it's really a perfect fit. I mean, look at it. It's right here. Let me show you. Where's the, where's the link? It's right here, right? It's got the perfect size for a phone case, for example. And that's just one example. I mean, we could apply an image like this to hundreds of products, right? So you wouldn't look at me and you wouldn't say I'm crazy, but when I say you can make literally a hundred sales off of an image like this, then people might start thinking I'm a little whacked out. Now, I can kind of understand because for many people, print on demand is a little difficult and not so difficult about the uploading process or anything like that, but it's the monotony behind it. And I, once again, I completely understand because sometimes they're sitting there, they're uploading, they're uploading, they're uploading, but they're not seeing the results. So I'll kind of explain. In the world of print on demand, right, if I was to get like a whiteboard, and I'm not going to do it now, but if I was to get a whiteboard and I was to, you know, kind of cast a net out there into the ocean of print on demand, some designs are going to sell, aka catch, and some aren't, you know, and that's normal. But, you know, I have some designs that I've created, maybe a year or two old, maybe three years old, four years old even. That never sold once, but that's okay. That doesn't mean I'm a loser or a failure. It just means that there's other designs that will sell. And so for an image like this, right, you think about it. If I'm going to first take full advantage of the image, I'm going to sell it through different stock photography sites. That's the first thing I'll do, right? Because it's very easy to list them and I just throw them up there. Never have to worry about them again. So I'm going to be uploading them there right? All kinds of stock photography sites. I'm not going to list them. I mean, you guys can do the research. Alamy, uh, Pond5, Dreams Time, Adobe Stock. The list goes on and on, right? So that that's maybe 10 different websites, right? After I do all that, I have now, right, out of those 10 websites, you got to say, okay, can those create me a bunch of sales? The answer is yeah. Then I could take an image like this, and then I would need to, after exporting, I'd probably need to upscale it again. Not probably, but definitely. Uh, I would need to upscale it because I think, let me see how big this image is. Uh, let's see here. I don't think it's that large. I think maybe it's like 1,400 pixels or something. Yeah, 2,800 2, in height and 1,700 uh, in width. Yeah. So an image like this, I would need to definitely post-production upscale. So I would need to put this in the Lumnar app, need to upscale it to past 4,000 pixels because as you guys know for display, you need to have a 2,900 by 4090 pixels, I think. Yeah, 4090. Uh, so basically over 4,000 pixels. So if I'm going to sell it on display, which I would, there's no reason why I wouldn't, I would upload it to display and list it there. Then I would take that same upscaled image, list it on Redbubble. There's no reason why I wouldn't do that either. And of course, it's not going to look perfect on all products, but I can do that. And that makes my job a little easier. Let's go ahead and continue. I'll take that same upscaled image and upload it to Society6. You know, I could just think of so many products where it would fit. Now, once again, not all products would this be ideal for. So, for example, on Society6, you have a t-shirt, for example. I wouldn't really want this to go on a t-shirt. It just wouldn't look right, right? Because everything we said yesterday with the corners and how it's not transparent and, you know, the whole nine, right? So, of course, it's not going to be ideal for all products, right? But if I'm trying to maximize on one image and try to extract as much money as I possibly can, that's what I would do. And I would be aware, by the way, that that's what I'm sacrificing, okay? 
the next thing I would do is I would ask myself, okay, can I post it on T Public? Now, me personally, it could work on T Public. I wouldn't post it. I personally wouldn't post it for T Public. Why? Because most of the products on T Public it wouldn't work for. You know, a design like this. Of course, you can put it on a T-shirt. Are people gonna buy it? I don't know. I wouldn't. F I wouldn't want to flood my account with designs that look like like this for my T Public. This is just not the place for that. You know, um, as far as Etsy, I wouldn't just post the image up for sale blindly. I would find a way to do the back end research. And I've shown this in the members area on how I do the research. And if you guys want to see the members area, you just go to nas.io slash uh, print on demand uh, passive income. And if you actually click the link, it will take you to the free course that we created on Redbubble. But our members area, let me just go ahead and click on it. I think we have a lesson on Etsy niche research. Let's see. Let me show you how I find the right keywords for Etsy. Do it, did I do it? Oh, here it is. Yep. Low competition keywords uh, mini course on Etsy. But um, I would find a way to apply the image, if I could, to Etsy. So, for example, if I do the research and I find that there's some search demand for a certain keyword that has something to do with this on a certain type of product, I figure out a way to connect the dots. So, like, for example, if I do the research and I find out uh, that this image goes well on duvet covers from a search standpoint, from an SEO standpoint, I'd find a way to put it on one. And I'd find a way to sell it on Etsy. You see what I'm saying? I'm not always saying that I wouldn't sell the product digitally, but I wouldn't make that my priority. I, I made a video um, not too long ago, really, maybe over a month ago, a month ago, I don't know. But I made a video talking about like five ideas or five products that you could sell on Etsy that are kind of out of the box thinking ideas. You know, not the traditional, just create the product, post it, create a t-shirt, a mug, post it without kind of any research. I've said this before, and I've said this maybe 20 times, but I'll say it again. Every product that I sell on Etsy, in a matter of three weeks, no more than a month, really, most products sell. I, I really don't have a problem where my products don't sell. The only reason why that happens to me is not because I'm lucky or because I have some sort of golden touch. It's because I go after specifically products that people are looking for that are underserved aka like as all you know another way of saying i go after products that are lower in competition but have as high search volume as possible you know i can't really control search volume all the way but as high as possible really so what i'm really controlling is the underserved markets the lower competition markets and I get it. There are people who don't do that and they love to compete with the big dogs, but that's not me. You know, I, I find my own niche and I find ways to compete. And as for Zazzle, when I take an image like this and I apply it to Zazzle, I can't really see this product working on a lot of different things other than certain one-off type products. Like I, I, for example, if there is like a, like a, like, for example, I, I, I've mentioned this before, and I don't want to go too deep into this, but because, you know, I, I'm planning to have future videos on Zazzle. But uh, Zazzle is a great place for customization type products, right? So if let's use this, for example, these poker chips that clearly show like, you know, occasion based type designs. If I'm going to sell a product, what kind of occasion can I attach this to? It's not much. It's This is really not, you know, that. This is a one-off style. For example, if I go to Redbubble and I search for, you know, a, uh, I don't know, a, a national park type t-shirt, that's a one-off design. I'm not going to buy that one t-shirt 50 times for a bunch of people at a wedding. It's just not ideal, right? Especially from T Public. There's no customization on it. Same thing with Redbubble. If I go buy this tomato, what is this, tomatoes, pomegranates? I don't know what this is. Yeah, pomegranate. If I buy this pomegranate phone case, right, I'm not going to buy 50 or 100 
to give out at my wedding. It's just, you know, it, it's not related. It has no relation. But it's more of a one-off type thing. So with an image like this, this clearly serves those one-off styles. It, it really wouldn't serve me personally. I personally would not sell it on Zazzle. I know people would. I know people would sell it on some sort of poster or something on Zazzle. I get it. It's fine. If you want to do it, go ahead. Um, in that case, you're really just benefiting off the SEO title base. And if I really was to give any website that kind of power over my art, it would be my own sites. It wouldn't be a website that I'm getting paid a part of a commission uh, or a part of a royalty. I'm not interested in that. So for me, like with Zazzle, I have to play according to the rules of the game. And I know this is a late night video. I know some of you guys are watching this really late. Some of you are watching it really early, depending on where in the world you're from. But um, yeah, for me, guys, an image like this, I can make 100 plus sales off of this image really with not that much difficult difficulty, excuse me, not that much difficulty. When you factor in all the things I just mentioned, we're talking about literally easily over 10 websites, maybe even 15, 20, right? And we're also talking aside from owning your own website, aside from taking the product, putting it or taking the image, putting it on a product and sending these products out to people through your own site, through your own domain, you know, your own store, whether it be Shopify or some other program, right? Aside from that, just using all these kind of curated marketplace type platforms, I can sell this image literally and easily over a hundred times. Now, granted, I'm going to get different royalties. So for example, if I was to even rank this, Society6 is at the top of the list. I'm going to get my highest royalties from Society6. The, the products that are usually purchased on Society6 are larger type products that cost more money to produce, whether it be a canvas, whether it be a poster, right, a framed poster, or whether it be a curtains. I, I'm still going to be able to make a higher profit margin. The next thing is probably display, but with display, you can't really guarantee that it will always sell. I'm still working on display. I'm still learning Displate, so I can't sit here and give you recommendations on Displate because I'm still learning it as a platform, and I don't like to speak on things before I know what I'm talking about. So with Displate, I can't really speak on it because I'm still learning the platform as a whole, and for me, it takes me months or even years to learn something. So I, once again, I don't speak on it until I master it. But you know, for me, it's either hit or miss. I can't really speak on it too much. And then as for Redbubble, Redbubble, I mean, I'm going to get commissions of maybe 5 to $11 a sale for something like this, right? And it could happen, you know, it depends. If I'm promoting it through Instagram or something like that, which would be, it wouldn't be something I would promote directly through Instagram. I'd probably use it as like a secondary or tertiary kind of process. Um, for those who watch my Instagram stuff, you guys know what I'm talking about. I wouldn't directly promote this on the feed. So probably in the five to 10 range, but it could sell 50 times a year, 60 times a year, pretty easily. Um, really with not that much difficult, I'm a difficulty. I'm already pulling in for brand new designs. And when I say brand new under a month old, you know, 10, 20 sales a month. And, and these are in, within the same month. So if we're talking in the course of a year, I mean, this could easily get me 50, 60 sales, uh, you know, with, with not that much difficulty. And I don't know if I said monthly, but I meant yearly. 50, 60 sales for the year, that's not that bad. Um, for Etsy, once again, it just depends on how I apply the product. It doesn't have to be a duvet cover. It could be anything, you know. It could be, it just depends on the situation. Um, it could be a canvas. It could be a poster. It depends how I apply it, right? So I have to take the product and kind of change it that way. And by the way, guys, that's why I say with the Etsy kind of thing, I don't walk in looking and telling myself I have to sell this physical product or I have to sell this digital product. I don't do that. I look and I do the research first before I do the product. And that's what makes Etsy similar to Zazzle for me is that my strategy behind Zazzle is I do the research first before I do the creation. A lot of people do it the opposite way on Zazzle. A lot of people are doing the creation first 
and then figuring out what to tag it. And that doesn't really work, at least for me. And I'm speaking from someone who's, you know, been doing it for years. So for me, I, I don't sit there and create and then figure out how to tag. I don't do that. Not with Zazzle. Um, I figure out first the research. I do the research, do the tags, do the whole thing. And then I do the creation, which once again, people do it the opposite way. But it is the same thing with Etsy. I find the, the, the market that's underserved, not too competitive, and then I serve it, if that makes sense. I create the products for that market. And if I can't do it directly myself, I'll find a way to get it done. So I'll find a company that can fulfill the product. I'll, I'll figure out something. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll put things together and make it happen. Um, if I don't do the, if I can't create the product myself, I'll find a way to buy the product. I'll find a way to outsource the creation. I'll figure it out, right? Uh, T Public. I already said I wouldn't sell this product on T Public, so it wouldn't even exist there to begin with. And then you got to factor in all the different stock photography sales. And the stock photography sales, it depends what site you're on, but they could range from twenty cents per sale all the way up to five, six, seven dollars a sale. Once again, it just depends on the website you're on. So, you know, it could it could sell across, let's say, ten websites, maybe anywhere from fifteen to a hundred times. I don't know. I'm just throwing a number out there. That's not too drastic. It really just depends on how the fan base takes to it of that particular site. I have some images on Adobe that have made me, you know, over three hundred dollars. And then I have images on Dreams Time that have made me over $70, $60. But then I also have images on each of those sites that have never made one single sale. So it really just depends. And, you know, I wouldn't look at it in a way to where I'm trying to make money or all my money off of one image. This is also the fallacy or the bad idea is as soon as I'm uploading images, I'll never return to it. I'll never look at it. I'll never contemplate how much sales it got. I'll never do that because... I have to spend now the rest of my time, the rest of my resources, the rest of my energy working on the next thousand products that I have to upload or the thousand images that I have to upload or, you know, the next thing that I got to do. So I'm not really concerned with the past. I'm just continuing to grow. And throughout that process, I'm always trying to learn. I'm always trying to figure out what can I improve, whether it be from a quality or a quantity standpoint. I'm always trying to figure out what things are my key point indicators, my KPIs, and um, or key performance indicators, whatever you want to call it. And I'm looking at my performance. You know, can something be improved? I'll give you guys an example with performance that sticks out in my head all day, every day, is like my YouTube thumbnails. For me, YouTube, I'm still a beginner. I know you guys look at me and I have 30 something thousand subs. Doesn't mean anything to me. I'm not uh, advanced by any means. I'm totally a beginner. And I have to figure it out. So in my in my head, I think, okay, how can I make my thumbnails better? I suck at making thumbnails. I try my best, you know, but I want to learn. I could easily pay someone to create me a thumbnail every day, but that's not what I want to do. I want to learn how to do it. I want to actually get good at it myself. So I'm trying different things. I'm testing different things and I'm trying to learn, you know, it could take me the next 10 years before I get good at it, but that's okay. I'm not in a rush. I'm just working. So uh, I think like my main takeaways from this video is, first of all, for you guys, is you can take one image and make literally hundreds of different passive income sales from it across all different sites within a period of one year. You can absolutely do that. The nice thing about uploading it to these sites is once it's up there, it's up there, you know? Um, the next thing I would say is just continue to keep trying to learn, you know, in all different kind of angles in different aspects and use your logic to be able to discern whether something is good for you or it's bad for you. You know, I could give you a piece of advice that might not necessarily work for you, but then someone else might give you a great piece of advice that works for you. It just depends on the situation. So, and I run into that all the time. I might hear people say, um, oh, investing in real estate is the best, but maybe investing in real estate is not for me, right? So it just depends on the situation and the personal situation of the individual. But I could tell you this, there's pretty much everybody listening to this who has the ability, I can't think of a somebody who doesn't, who has the ability to take the image, upscale it drastically, upload it to all these sites in great quality, in great fashion, and uh, take full advantage of it. There's no reason why you can't. 
All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Hopefully this video was informative. If you guys have certain video requests or anything like that, put them in the comments down below. And uh, I'll see you soon. All right. Peace out. Bye.